you mentioned Herzog. Just to uh, venture down this road of death and fear and, uh-huh. and so on, there's been a few madmen like you in this world. Uh, he's documented a couple of them. Uh, what lessons do you draw from Grizzly Man or Into the Wild, mm. those kinds of stories? I, were you ever afraid that you would be one of those stories? Oh, yeah. I actually think that, that it's in Mother of God where I said I almost into, into the wilded myself. Like I, I, I went out there and really I got so lost and so destroyed that I said, this, this is, this is going to be the next one. You know, This is going to be the next story of some idiot kid from New York who went to the Amazon thinking he was Percy Fawcett and then vanished. Because if you, if you do vanish out there, your body's going to be consumed in a matter of days, like, like two you know, if we see if we see an animal dead on a trail, it's you got dung beetles and and fly larvae and vultures, and there's a whole pecking order. You know, you get the black vultures, the yellow vultures, the king vulture. They all come in. Mm-hmm. That thing is picked clean in a couple of days. What would be the creature that eats most of you in that situation? Probably the vultures. The vultures. Probably the vultures and the and the and the maggots. It's it's really quick. It's really really quick. Like 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 you even as far as like you can't leave food out. You know, like if you have like a piece of chicken you say oh i'll eat it in the morning you leave it out you can't do that it's not it's not, it's not good by morning grizzly man for example like what because that's a beautiful story it's both comical and genius and especially the way herzog tells it well first of all, do you like the way he told the story do you like herzog i do I, I love herzog and i love his his documentary the burden of dreams which is which is in the amazon not very far from where i work and the the sheer madness that you see this man undergoing of just trying to recreate hauling a boat over a mountain um is 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 wild and and the you know the the extras that he hired to be to play the natives are are the i think they're machiganga tribesmen and they're just they they just look like all the guys that I hang out with and it's like you know they're they're doing all this stuff in the jungle that months and months and months and you can just see him deteriorating with madness because the jungle you know, your boat, you know how many times I've tied up a boat to the side of the river? This just happened like a year and a half ago. I tied up, a, through, a lot, through COVID, I pretty much just lived in the jungle for mm-hmm. a while. And there was nobody there and there was no support. And I tied up my boat and the rain is just hammering. Like like, like the universe is trying to rip the earth in half. The rain is just going and the river is rising. And I tied up the boat, but then you go to sleep and you got to wake up every two hours to go check the boat. Mm-hmm. And the boat is thrashing back and forth. And I, so all night, every two hours I'd wake up barefoot in driving rain, like, you know, golf ball raindrops and just go down, check the boat. And then by morning I was like, I fell asleep, woke up, checked the boat. And then I was like, I'm just gonna go make coffee. I was so done. I was so like at the end of my rope, every time bailing the boat out and stuff. And then we got 15 minutes of heavy rain that filled the boat, sank it. And so now I'm stuck up river with no boat. And it's like that type of thing where it's like, no matter how hard you try, the jungle's just like, listen, you ain't, you're nothing. You are nothing. And so it's that constant reminder. And so Herzog really threw himself into that in that film. And uh, it's it's brilliant to watch. What do you think he meant by the line that you include in your book? It's a land that God, if he exists, has created in anger. <laughs> <laughs> Said in a German accent. Yeah. An overwhelming and collective murder. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so that's that's <laughs> so he didn't really appreciate the beauty of the of of the murder. I think he appreciated it, but to him, it it was very dark. You know, I think he saw the darkness in it, and that's there. It sure is. As soon as you do ayahuasca, you that door opens and you see the darkness because it brings you right into the jungle, like the the heart of it. But I think that for him, it it is. I think that darkness is something that he embraces and that he loves. There's another film of his, and I don't know if this is accurate, but my memory has it, that there's a penguin, and I think it's in Antarctica, and the penguin's going in the wrong direction, yeah. away from the ocean. Yeah. And I feel like he goes on this monologue about how like he's just had enough. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, you know, this one penguin is just marching towards, you know. Yeah, well, he his, because I remember that clip from that uh, documentary, and what Werner says is that the penguin is deranged. Yes. That he's lost his mind. And I took offense to that. Yeah. Because maybe that's a brave explorer. Like, how do, how do you know there's not some a lot more going on? Like, it could be a love story. Those penguins get super attached. Maybe his mate was over there and he yeah. had to go find her. Like, well, Or it's a lost mate and he last time he saw her was going in that direction. Exactly. So this is like the great explorer. They We we assume animals are like the average 
of the bell curve. Like every animal we interact with is just the average, but there's special ones, just like there's special humans. Yeah. That no, could be a special penguin. Uh, it could have been. And I, I had the same thought where I was like, I was like, he's, I, I found it beautiful how he interpreted it. What yeah. I took away from that was I found that Werner Herzog's monologue there was, was brilliantly dark and also comedic but but maybe irrelevant biologically speaking towards penguins like you know um which which happens a lot with animals i find like there's so many times where i'll find people be like do you think that animals can show compassion and you hear like a bunch of people that have never left the pavement talking about like wow this this one animal helped another animal. it's like it's like go ask jane goodall if animals can show compassion go go talk to anybody that works on a daily basis with animals and they'll and so like to me there's a there's always a little bit of frustration in hearing people sort of like pleasantly surprised that animals aren't just you know uh, these you know these automatons of you know just just what's the word like um like programmed you know nothingness 